and um, for us and yeah, show us what you've got. Sure. Thank you so much. Uh, thanks for having us. Um, and yeah, I'm, I'm excited to to show you our measure killer, which we already talked about a little bit and then people are worried about the crazy name and maybe we can also um, shed some light there. So the whole thing was born out of a, a client request, um, too many measures in one model. And um, we tried to strip out the things we didn't need. And um, the tools available at the time didn't really work completely. And yeah, that's when we, we, we said, hey, maybe we can do a better job and see where it can lead us. And that was nine months ago, I would say. So it's still pretty new. Um, and um, yeah, maybe I can share my screen and just show you guys what it's all about. Yeah, that'd be cool. It's so uh, one second. Uh, here we go. So I'm just going to start on the website because I think that gives you a can, good overview. We can see your screen. Yes. Yeah, can you can see, see it now? That's good. Yeah, yeah. now we can see Great. it. Now it was good. Great. So Measure Killer is an external tool for Power BI Desktop, um, and it does a couple of things. Um, so the main features, I would say, are finding and potentially deleting unused measures, unused columns, and also it gives you a quite comprehensive analysis of your report or data model, but also the report. So we always differentiate between the data model, which are the tables, the relationships, the measures, and the report, meaning the visuals, pages, uh, the filters that you're using, because most most tools analyze only the model, but Measure Killer also analyzes the report because we want to basically give a, a holistic overview of uh, yeah what you actually need and what you don't need. Because you could need something as part of your data model, part of your relationship, and and then that's kind of easy, I would say. But but then also maybe you might use a certain column or measure only in one visual somewhere in your report. And that's basically what it can find. Um, so it measure killer goes through visuals. Um, it, it goes through stuff in your custom visuals as well, even though we have not tested it for all custom visuals. There are just too many of them. We have a little list of custom visuals um, that we tested it with and where we we had no problems. Um, but there are just also some limitations. So. If, if you're interested, um, actually the website is called measurekiller.com, so you can just find everything there um, and you can read through the documentation and also the limitation, which the limitations, which also might be quite important, I think, if you want to use it. Um, so it also looks through your measures, relationships, columns, also the columns used in Power Query. So if, even if you deactivate the load of a certain query and you, you still use it in a join somewhere else, um, we're getting that. Um, Power Query is is tricky. It's really hard to to find all the use cases. Um, but I think so far we've had no trouble with the in the latest version where we updated a lot of the logic. Um, it also goes through your calculated tables and columns, and of course stuff like conditional formatting. So pretty much everything is covered, but there are certain limitations, and those are outlined here. Very specific stuff. Um, and also, of course, then in every version, we also find some bugs. Um, and for that, we have our own feedback page where people um, provide some um, feedback um, or give us or notice about uh, some bugs in, in the latest version. And then we'll, we'll fix that in the next version. And we're pretty quick on developing. So every couple of weeks, actually, we, we, we release a new version. Um, but let me just show you how it all looks like. Um, and I'm going to open Power BI here. So we have a sales model report um, just as a showcase, basically. And this report only has two pages. So this overview page here, and then we have a customer's page um, right here where we do some analysis of our customers by income, by age. Um, they're single or not, uh, where they're from, etc. So we just have a standard report here, and that's where I want to run Measure Killer on. 
Um, we also have a couple of tables, as you can see here. We have fact and dimension tables, everything nicely organized, like what you expect in a showcase report, right? Um, we have our measure table. Uh, here I even put in a calculated column just to, um, because we want to find also some stuff that is not used and it's it's easier to, to show that. So Measure Killer is a, a tool you need to install on your computer. So it's, it has an installer. Um, uh, there are two versions. There's an admin version. Maybe I can actually go back to the website for this. Um, there is an admin version and a portable version, and you can download this from our website or from Microsoft. So it's also in the Microsoft Store. Maybe we can take a look actually. Um, so it's just called Measure Killer. It's it's really easy to find. Even if you look for Power BI, at some point it will pop up. Um, and um, so those the difference between the admin and the portable version is for this one you need admin rights, um, and here you don't need admin rights. And the only actual difference is that if you install the version with admin rights, you can launch Measure Killer from within the external tools ribbon. That's the only difference. Everything else is the same. Yeah, so you can get it here. Um, the latest version is 0.9.6, but actually I have already a newer one, which we're testing right now. Um, before we started the recording, I was explaining to Phil that we um, that we added a proxy capability because some bigger customers, they say, well, we don't open all internet traffic in our organizations. We want to use the proxy. And there was no proxy in Measure Killer before, and now we have that. That's why we're testing it. And I'm going to basically base my presentation on this version where we just, the only thing we did, we, add, we added this proxy here in the settings. Um, and yeah, that's that's basically it. So there's not much new there. And um, whatever you, the 0.96, that you can download from the website right now looks exactly the same and does exactly the same things. There's only one bug we fixed here, I think. OK, so um, there are three modes in Measure Killer. Um, the first one is to analyze a single report or data set, which is what we have here in the sales report. Um, the second mode is you have multiple reports connected to one data set and you have everything on your machine. Basically, you're able to download it maybe from the Power BI service and you can put all the files um, into Measure Killer to be analyzed. This, those are two completely offline features. Um, if there is no internet connection, Measure Killer will automatically go into the offline mode and then only those two um, options are available and this will be grayed out. The third mode is what we're really proud of and what is really exciting, but this is also a paid upgrade. So um, depending on your organization size, there will be some costs. Um, and here you can analyze a shared or golden data set in the Power BI service and Measure Killer will basically find all the connected Power BI reports and then we'll run its analysis on that. And, and we will show this at the end, because now I just want to keep it simple and I just want to show um, this one single report and data set. So I'm going to click here and now um, it's basically opening the main window. Um, and here uh, I need to do a couple of things. I just need to select the port um, like for most external tools. This is gives us the model information, which means that metadata. So we're all measure killer doesn't analyze any actual data. We're only looking at the metadata it means the name of the columns, name of tables, um, but we're also reading the DAX expressions, for example, things like this, but we're not looking inside your column um, because some people have questions about that, of course. So you're going to select the port here, and this just gives you all the ports of the um, Power BI uh, instances you have open on your machine. Um, and then also you need to select the PBIX file, because from there we get the information about the report layout, which means all the visuals, filters, um, things like this. But it's again just the metadata. So if I select the sales report here and I have selected the port, um, it's just confirming the path on your local machine because it could be that your reports all have the same name or you're, you're not really sure. So you just can double check here. 
before you click on run. And when you do so, it's running uh, with those parameters, meaning analyzing your report. And in this case, we have 50 artifacts, means columns or measures. And it took it five seconds to finish. And um, now I can go to show results. And what I get now is every artifact in my data model, meaning every measure or column, could also be a calculated column, by the way, um, will be listed here. So every row is one artifact. And then I can see white means it is used and red means it is not used anywhere. Um, so if I open, for example, uh, my country, uh, which is a column part of the DIM territories table, I will see all the places where it's used in my report. So I can see it's used in a map on the overview page, meaning down here, right? That's the only map I'm using. It's used in a slicer, but it's also used in a slicer on the customer's page. And, and this just gives me um, an overview of where my artifacts are used. And of course, if they're used at all or not. I don't really see if people have questions, but I've already talked a lot. So if, if there's anything um, to this point, um, feel free to unmute yourself and ask. Yeah, or... I did say, yeah, I said in the chat, like if anyone's got any questions, just make sure they feel free to post in the chat or use the raise the hand feature to come off. Um, and you know, I'll make sure that um, I, I get their questions to you if that pops up. So. Great, thank you. Um, yeah, so what, what else do we see here? We can see the size of our columns, right? That is also quite important because we can, now I'm just sorting this, but the biggest um, column in our whole data model is actually not used. And of course here, it's just 1.1 megabytes. Maybe we don't care, but if you have larger data sets, this comes in very, very handy. And there's this button on the top right where you just filter out um, the unused artifacts, and then you can look at them um, in a more, in an easier way, or you just go back to the original table. Yeah, um, so this is basically the main output, but um, we also have the opportunity or the, the, the a function to generate an Excel report based on all of this, and this will even have more details. So. I'm going to um, open this uh, report that I just generated before. Um, and this shows us everything in a nice uh, way in Excel. And you can again have all the artifacts here. So it means you can see our revenue measure and you can see that it is used. You can see the DAX expression. And here we have it multiple times because I chose the um, the row by row report where we have for every artifact however often it is used we will have one uh, row so um yeah. basically we, we do have mm -hmm. yeah we do have sure. one question sorry from yes. xiao um does the running time slash performance relate to the data set size or other elements e.g number of visuals right might be from just back here i think that's a perfect question for klaus to answer um, All right, cool. Klaus, you want to take that? Hi, guys. Um, so oh, that's a very good question. Uh, the running time will be directly proportional to the amount of measures and columns that you have and the amount of visuals, especially the amount of visuals. Uh, but it, uh, you can have, for example, a data set with one gigabyte of size and let's say 50 artifacts, meaning measures and columns. Uh, and if you have a very small report, let's say 100 megabytes, so 10 times less, and you have 2,000 columns and measures, it will take a lot of time for measure learner to analyze the second report. And especially so, if you have custom visuals, right, those will also slow it down. So it's, it's quite specific and you don't really know before um, unless you know how exactly measure killer works. Exactly. So if you have five custom visuals and the report is tiny, it might take longer than a two gigabyte data set because we don't care about the data, right? We're only reading the metadata. So I think that's um, that's the main point. So it depends on the number of artifacts 
and things like this. Nice. But general, we, we've also tried it um, to really find out the maximum, right? If there's any limit, what happens if we have 100 connected reports and stuff like this? And so far, we haven't really hit that. I think we've tried it with uh, 55 connected reports. Um, basically, 55 thin files connected to one data set, um, all in one analysis, and it has worked. So if you if you find the limit, please let us know. <laughs> yeah, as I was saying here, um, we have this revenue measure basically 10 times in this in this Excel file because it's used in, in 10 different places. And here we can just see uh, if it's used or not. And obviously it is. Uh, we can see the tax expression. We can see where it is used, um, on which page of my Power BI report. And I can even see the type of visual and I get the visual ID of where those things are used. So for example, if I go to revenue here, um, and um, I can just filter this. This makes it a little easier. Um, now I can basically find all the types of visual it is used in. So we only get the type of visual. There is no real title that we get. Um, so we only have the type of visual and the visual ID, which might be handy in Power Automate. Um, at first, we were not really sure what to do with this, but I've seen people use it in Power Automate for some use cases. Maybe Phil also has some insight on this since uh, he works at Microsoft and knows about this more. But um, yeah. Sorry, which knows about what more? I was, I was just the, visu the visual ID. Um, yes. We have, I mean, so far we have, we just put it into our documentation. We didn't really use it much, but I've seen people use it in Power Automate for some mm -hmm. um, stuff. But yeah, for me, it's still kind of, we're not really sure yet what to do with it. Yeah, I mean, it does allow you to um, uniquely identify, um, you know, a particular measure. Where it's useful is when you're trying to look through log files um, retrospectively. Mm -hmm. um, you know, right. maybe you, you, you notice that one particular DAX query was really, really slow. Mm -hmm. And you want to know, well, where does this DAX query come from? You know, I might be, I might be an admin that can see the log files, um, but my tenant has many workspaces and many reports. Um, and I want to zero right down to the individual visual on the page that generated mm -hmm. this DAX query that perhaps put my capacity into overload. Um, and that visual ID is a is a useful way to help me zero in and go, okay, <laughs> I know the matrix um, that got that got run by who. Um, we can either delete that visual or at least uh, have a look at the uh, calculation in the DAX involved or the data model to to get a better idea about what's going on. So. Um, Okay. It doesn't show up in many places, um, but yeah, it, it should uniquely identify at any given point in time uh, a visual on a page anywhere in the capacity. So it can be quite mm -hmm. useful, but um, not not for all scenarios. Right. Cool. Um, so so far we have always looked at certain measures or columns, right? But you can also turn it around and say, okay. Um, what is my map visual consuming? And here um, in this report, at least we only have one map visual. And then if I filter that here, I could also use this visual ID. Then I can basically see all the artifacts that are used in that visual. And of course, I can do the same in Power BI, right? I can go here and I have this new on object formatting. And then I can also find that, okay, I'm using the country as location here, profit, profit margin, cost, and revenue. But in this documentation here, I would see the same thing. Um, just uh, yeah, if I filter basically a certain visual. So that's the Excel documentation that um, Measure Killer can generate, um, and that's basically here as part of this save results. And then you get a little bit more information than this high-level table overview, I would say. Um, but it's so so. Imagine now we have identified what is used, what is unused. And I'm going to go to the unused and I want to see now, okay, let's get rid of some stuff, right? Because here I have three unused measures. And for measures especially, if you're not using it, you can maybe say, okay, I created this when I tested some stuff. I want to delete those, or I, at least I want to delete part of the measures. And that's where we have the kill measures and columns option. And it's kind of graphic, but we, we like it to 
to keep it kind of funny, right? And here um, uh, you can basically get rid of all the unused measures or you can select certain measures or you can just create a C sharp script um, to delete them later or somewhere in, in Tabula Editor or some kind of external tool. Um, in, in our case, I, I just want to um, show you how this works um, because we can just look at this. Basically, this is the only thing where Measure Killer actually writes to the instance of analysis services. So in this case, I want to get rid of cost and revenue and I want to kill those measures. Um, and it's just double checking. Um, and, and this is, of course, somewhat risky because you cannot really recover those unless you build this Excel output before where you had the DAX expressions, right? Then you can rebuild them uh, using that. But in this case, I'm just going to go to yes. And now it's basically doing the same thing as tabular editor. Um, and the process is running that removes this um, through a C sharp uh, command uh, from the model. And you can see it's already gone. And then measure killer will automatically run the analysis again. Um, and now basically we can only only see this year to date profit measure left in in the model. So this is how you can get rid of measures. And for columns, um, we have a really good way, I think. Um, it's nothing completely automated, but it also helps you a lot, I think. So you can either, this is basically similar to what you have in Power Query. So you can have in the drop down here all the tables that contain unused columns. And you can see that. They're sorted um, uh, based on the total size that I can save in my data model. So in the fact table, um, I have 1.12 megabytes to save. Um, and this is basically um, those two columns that I can remove because they are unused. And then I can click on apply. Uh, one second, I haven't selected anything here. I can either do remove columns or remove other columns. It's just this power query steps depending on what you prefer. Maybe I, I'm going to do remove other columns. And then um, what Measure Killer does, it reads the M code that you have in your query right now, and it adds one step at the end um, saying columns removed by Measure Killer. And then um, basically it, this will be the last step. And, I'll, I'm just, and then you can just copy this M code um, and go into Power Query. And uh, now I can go to my fact table. I might have to authenticate again here. Let's see. Um, let's read this for a second. Oh, yeah, here we go. So this this is my uh, transformation protocol um, before. And now since I copied the measure killer code, I can just paste it here. And um, you can see that it added this step. And I'm just going to go to done. So you can see it here also. It's basically just doing select columns of everything else because we chose remove other columns in this option here. And I think this is a very safe and good way to remove columns because I can always delete this step later and then just basically leave them in. So there's nothing that can be destroyed. Like getting rid of the measures is more risky because um, when when we did this, now if I go to save my report and I didn't do any backups, I didn't do any documentation, as soon as I click on save, those measures are gone. Now I could still escape, right, and um, could go back to my old version, but as soon as I click on save, those measures will be, um, well, uh, there's no way to recover anything. That's why it's always good to keep backups and also to, we encourage you to, save those results to Excel so you can have a documentation before and then you can document it again because it always generates this timestamp. Um, you can document it again after you did your optimization. OK. Um, so that is the first mode and. Now let's see the ultimate version, the ultimate um, um, use case for Measure Killer, and I'm going to close this Power BI here. Um, so imagine now we have a centralized data set, and I will show you this here. 
we have a centralized data set. Uh, do we have questions? Uh, there was one, but um, Klaus managed to um, help David out in the chat. OK, great. So imagine we have a centralized data set, and in, in our case, we have oh. a weather data set. Mm -hmm. Actually, sorry, we oh. do have one. Um, great. Uh, how about measures using another measure? If the parent measure was not used in a visual, the child yep. measure was used, will it identify yep. the parent as unused? And if power query was changed by measure killer, will it affect query folding? Right. So now that's a um, complex query. So I think there's two <laughs> questions there. <laughs> yeah. So let's start with query folding first. Of course, measure killer doesn't know anything about query folding. We want to keep it simple. We add our step at the end. But you can move those steps around. So it's if you do the remove other columns and you select only the columns that you need, you can try to move it more up in your uh, product in your transformations, and then um, you can keep query folding. But query folding is also a co complex thing, and you have to make sure that query folding is still happening. This is just to give you a hint and to pre-build um, the code to remove those columns. And basically, query folding is 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 not um, built into the logic yet. It's it's too much um, at this point to to analyze. Um, and of course, if a measure is only used in another measure, uh, we will realize that. But once you do a first round of cleanup, meaning you can delete some columns, you can delete some measures, um, you you delete everything that measure killer suggests. In that there can be a second round because, for example, you only used one measure in a second measure, and you and that measure was not used, and and you you remove this second measure, then suddenly the first measure, which only referenced in the second, suddenly this one will will be unused. So it can take multiple runs for you to clean up everything, because at every run there can be newly unused artifacts because of the things we deleted before and they were only used there. So that's possible and it, that's why it can take multiple runs for you to clean up your model entirely. Okay, thank you. And, and Paul has a question. He has his hand raised up. Paul, do you want to come off mute? And yeah, um, I don't know if you know the answer to this. It's more a question of how Power Query works. But if you take the output at the end and remove the columns, does Power Query know that you've done that and then not do all the steps that created that column in the first place? Or or do you still have that inefficiency in the Power Query process where it's it's building all that stuff and then you just don't use it? I'm just wondering if you, if you might apply this as a way of simplifying the model, but sometimes you might want to actually go into Power Query and actually manually strip all the steps out as well. Yeah, I, I think, Paul, that completely depends on those steps, the data source and a whole bunch of yeah. things. Um, and you know there are probably scenarios where adding that step in the end probably does allow Power Query to come up with a really simple native query that skips all those steps. Okay. There will be equally probably other scenarios where no, it can't and um, not necessary. That that would be my read on it, but I suspect cool. that is more a um, question for a Power Query expert. Um, but uh, you know, probably good to keep your eye on it the way you normally would do with Power Query to see what's yeah, getting exactly. generated. Would be Excellent. my um, advice. So. Thank you. Great. Yeah. Um, yeah, query folding is is super complicated. Um, I actually was able to talk with Chris Webb about this a little bit at SQL Bits, and I realized it's even more complex than I thought. And so, um, yeah, <laughs> I think that's that's um, that's as far as we can discuss here. Um, it depends on so many things, especially the data source and what it does with the query. Um, so maybe we can go to this um, mode that I wanted to show to analyze the golden data sets. And that was something we released a couple of weeks back. And that was really for us a milestone in the development of this tool, because you cannot download all your data sets all the time, especially in bigger organizations. You have this golden data set approach, right? And here we have it simulated, basically. We have a weather data set that is getting its uh, stuff from a weather API. And then we've built some thin files, some live reports, however you want to call it, on this data set. Um, and they just look like, yeah, like a world map where we get some temperature, 
all over the place. Um, and in every report, we use certain artifacts from this data set. But then you can also see here that there is another report built on this data set in a different workspace. So we want to have this holistic approach that searches basically through your whole tenant. Um, and I will show you this now in Measure Killer. So when you click here, first of all, this is part of the paid upgrades to Measure Killer. So this is where we're actually charging for. And um, you can find all the details on our website if you're interested in, in this function. Um, but if you click here, the first thing you need to do is you need to authenticate yourself because we're going to send AP REST API queries um, to your Power BI tenant. And if I go here, like this is basically to get a list. So now we get a list of all the workspaces, all the premium workspaces in your Power BI tenant because those are the ones that can be potentially uh, contain uh, data sets to be analyzed. So maybe um, in, in our case, just for the demo, um, I'm always going to this measure killer workspace because my data set, this uh, weather data set is in this MK workspace. And those of course only shows the workspaces that with this account that I chose, had, uh, this account has access to. So we're not doing any admin API calls. It's just simple um, REST API call, and it depends on your um, permissions. So now I can see all the data sets in that, um, in that workspace, and I'm going to connect to this weather data set. And it has to be a premium um, workspace because we're now going to do an XMLA connection, which is a premium feature. Um, so I have to authenticate actually a second time to do this, to run this XMLA connection on this data set. Um, and I think in this case, it saved my login information, so I, I don't have to actively log in again. And now um, I'm going to get a list of all the workspaces again. Um, where I want to search for connected reports. So now we want to give you this flexibility that you say, OK, I want I don't want to look through my dev workspaces because every API call that Measure Killer makes um, adds to the total API calls in your organization. And Microsoft has some kind of limits um, that are, I think, under NDA. We don't really know exactly what the limits are, but we have to be a little careful with those REST API calls, because if we do thousands in minutes, probably it will create some problems. Um, we have tested this for hundreds of API calls and it has worked, but it really depends on your organization, what else is happening um, and things like this. And maybe Phil knows more about this. So I, I want to give you a chance to shed some light here. Sorry, say again, the, what, what's the, um... the... The API call limit that you can make um, in um, in Power BI, so this REST API oh, calls. There's, yeah, I'm only vaguely aware of that. I, you know, okay. I I have seen conversations around it, and I and I yeah. believe we will limit how many you can make in right. a, in a short space of time. Yeah, there there may be good quality documentation around it. There might not be. Um, but yeah, okay. no, sorry, I'm I, I'm, sure. I'm vaguely aware that we do have a throttling limit, but um, yeah. Because there is some kind of limit, we just want to give you this flexibility to remove also workspaces to be searched here because you just know that, yeah, those shouldn't be part of the analysis. And I'm just going to take out everything test or dev here and the rest I'm just going to leave um, because every for every workspace we'll do one API call. So now when I click on submit, you can see um, I had 23 um, workspaces selected and that uh, plus those two that we did before, now we did 25 API calls. It's not that much, of course, but it really depends on your setup. And you can see now that we found those four connected reports, just like in the UI, um, uh, that are connected to this weather data set that resides in my MK workspace. And what we can do now is we can basically download those reports with some kind of export in the end. And this export is also an API call, but um, we're we're only getting the metadata because those have a live connection to the data set. So we're only getting the metadata for those reports. 
and you can see that um, I'm basically doing this right now or measure killer is doing this and once it's done you can run the analysis and now we can basically go back to this main window like we saw before um, and measure killer will will start its analysis here just takes a while here we go so now it's analyzing those four reports and the data set the weather data set and we only have 58 artifacts here and not so many pages in the reports so it's quite fast and what we get now is we get an output of all the stuff in the data set um, if it's used and where it's used in those reports and additionally you can see that some artifacts don't belong to the data set the only case that can be is if it's a report level measure meaning I added uh, I added a measure in those um, reports in those thin files that are connected to the uh, data set in the Power BI service. I added measures on top of my data model, and then those measures only exist in those reports. But I still get them here in the analysis, and I can see where they are used. But of course, deleting stuff now is is much more complicated. Um, and um, but I get a a holistic overview of all the things um, I can see in which report um, the size measure is used um, and you can see it's in, used in all of the reports actually in the I can map visual. Um, so this is the ultimate version because this can really tell you um, where which parts of your potentially huge data model is currently in use and which is not and what what part is not and that the goal here is to to give you this information and then maybe you can reduce the model size in a safe way that doesn't break anything right that's that's what we try to achieve here because those data sets usually just get bigger and bigger and people just have no idea anymore what is used what is not used people can build all kinds of reports all over the tenant and um, and this is the only way I'm aware of where you can analyze this type of golden data set. And there are some limitations. It doesn't work for paginated reports, so we don't we cannot analyze those. And um, also, for example, Power BI goals, um, some things um, do not work. Uh, we have this compatibility list here uh, on the website. And you can see, for example, that we do not look at dashboards, even though dashboards mostly also take content from the reports, right? So maybe there's not a problem there. Um, paginated reports don't work at all currently. Also, we do not know anything about analyzing Excel. Those Excel files are on people's personal machines. We have no idea what's going on there. So those are not part of the analysis. Of course, it's only about Power BI reports. So there's some limitations, of course. Um, but otherwise, um, it, it checks all the Power BI reports that you can download. So some reports that are built in the Power BI service cannot be downloaded, and then also Measure Killer will not be able to analyze those. Um, that's actually one other limitation I need to point out to you. Um, but generally, most reports that are in production that um, are in use, I think um, that should work. And um, yeah, you can you can just test it um, and um, give us also some feedback. So we have currently a little bit over 6000 downloads in the last couple of months and we have around 100 users per day. So it's it's quite popular, but we're still uh, need we will still need your feedback. We want to um, find what is still not working and we want to improve that. And that's also why we have this feedback page on our website um, where people can just add some comments and feedback um, and also maybe let us know about bugs that you have experienced. It's also here in the UI. It has this give feedback link. So for those golden data sets now, if I did my um, analysis, 
and now I want to remove things, I cannot just kill measures here. We don't want to mess or we don't want to interact with any of the golden or shared data sets you have in the service. That's risky business. Uh, we're only doing a read um, XML a read connection. We don't we do not write anything. Um, so here you will get a C sharp script basically to remove those measures, for example, in, in tabular editor and the, removing the columns is the same as before, meaning you will get the M code. Um, and um, and then you need to paste that um, yourself into into the data set or run a um, run something through an, another tool. And here you have the same documentation features as before. So that's analyzing shared or golden data sets. Nice. And was there a third mode? Actually, um, so I kind of jumped the second mode. Um, the second mode is analyzing a shared data set um, sure. in an offline way. Um, where you need to have all the files on your local machine. I can just quickly show how how that works. In the end, it, it does the same thing um, as the online mode, but this is part of the free version, basically. So um, I just need to open the set for a second, then I can show it to you. We used to show all three modes one at a time, but then at the end, people are already tired and oh, so much oh, talking. And then the coolest thing comes at the end, right? Uh, it's kind of, uh, yeah, that's why I jumped this one. Okay, so a couple of things. Um, you know, what have you got planned? That This is a pretty sophisticated tool. It, it, it's quite complicated and it, and it deals with a very hard thing quite well. Um, what have you got planned to add to this in the, in the short term and, and perhaps right. the longer term? But also, um, you know, the difference between the paid and the free ver free version. You know, what are the yeah. real the, the key differences between those? And um, does is there a trial? Is there an opportunity for someone to use the paid version um, yeah. for a short period to at least test to see whether it is something they would like to do? I know I've got a couple of questions there, but um, I'd love to hear your thoughts. Sure. I mean. Originally everything was free, but then um, we invest, we started investing so much time. And like I mentioned mm -hmm. to you before, it's basically one person working full time on this now, maybe even more. And we cannot just um, keep on subsidizing Measure Killer like that. That's why um, we basically said, okay, some bigger organizations, especially if they want to have support from us, they should pay for that. And that's actually what we, um, built the paid version for, and you can see here on the website, the differences. Um, in the end, um, those two things here um, are free and will forever be free. And um, only this thing here, where it basically goes into your tenant and search for searches for the connected reports itself, that's the only paid thing. Everything else, this, it's the same logic everywhere. It's the same features everywhere. The only thing, that is basically um, paid is that it automatically finds the connected reports. If you don't want to pay, you're free to find the reports and download them yourself, get the data set, and then you can run everything locally. I can just quickly show this here. It's the same thing. So I just uh, need to have my data set open here. Um, and then um, I'm going to add my thin reports. So here I have this little UI. And I can either add them one at a time and I have those in this case, I just have those three. I can either add them like this or I can even add a whole folder of thin files. So now I'm just adding this twice and then I need to actually be careful here because you can see I, I still I actually still have to add the data set as well. I forgot about that. So first I need to add the data set here because we also need to look at that. And then um, now I can add all my thin files from a folder. And now I have the data set and those three connected reports. I go to submit. It's just double checking if this is really the data set. I can click on yes. And now it's running same analysis. It will give you the same output, but you need to have everything yourself. You need to prepare it, give it to measure killer. That's that's basically the difference between the free and the paid version. So 
the paid versions, and there are actually two models for smaller companies. Um, yeah, I, I can still run it, but it will it will basically um, you can just quickly see how this works. Um, yeah, and then I get the same result. So this is basically still part of the free version. Um, and there you just need to have everything yourself, right? So it's an offline mode only. It doesn't do anything in your tenant um, and you need to prepare um, the files yourself. And then we have two paid subscriptions, one for smaller companies that's like $200 um, per year. And this is only for PPU, for premium per user workspaces, but then you have basically the full functionality. It will automatically find the connected reports, but here you don't have any extra support. So you just can go to our report, to our feedback page, and this is the support that we give you. And for the bigger companies, we're charging more and they will have dedicated support because they also want that. And that's why we basically built it like this. Um, but in terms of logic or functionality, it's the same thing. It's just here you need to do more work yourself. Nice. And and um, it really just, you know, looks for measures that aren't called anywhere, that are completely um, redundant. There's no plans to actually kill measures that are badly written. So, <laughs> but, um, That's on you. I'm just, just, <laughs> I'm just joking there. Um, yeah. Although it could be quite interesting to incorporate the same public um, best practice rules uh, because it seems like you've built the infrastructure to already go through and be able to look at models very very closely so to build your own best practice analyzer or something on already publicly available um, data sets um, like the one we make for tabular editor for example mm -hmm. could equally be a fairly good nice quick win where you could go through and yeah. say hey i've got this capability of you know, uh, looking for, for measures, um, here's another way that we can look at them. So I'm sure you've got lots of ideas and and, and plans to, yeah. to take this. So Actually, um, we almost developed this at one point. Um, what I thought about back then was um, to, to give kind of a rating for one page, like you're using that many visuals, you're using mm -hmm. a pie chart, warning, um, things like this. Um, and then we can maybe sum up all the visuals and give it like a point rating. You know, um, I think I've seen people giving like, I don't know, two points for a table visual, three points for a bar chart, and you shouldn't have more than, I don't know, 20 points on the whole page, stuff like this. I thought mm -hmm. that would be nice. But um, in the well, end, we didn't. Um, yeah, if you get enough people buying a basic or a pro um, subscription, <laughs> you can afford the time to actually spend and developing Maybe, and taking yeah. it that direction so right i mean we're gonna continue developing it anyway just if if we get a lot more um paid subscribers we can we can add uh maybe a second full-time person developing this um but anyway it's it's not it's not only about this i just we just want to give basically the big customers their chance of buying dedicated support right because that's what they want but also it's mostly a community tool and it's, it should be free to use. Nice. And regarding your question, what um, where what the direction is that we want to push this forward um, is actually that um, now, especially in bigger environments, the client tool, client software is always a problem. It's a security, potential security issue, things like this. We we try to or we would like to make it some kind of API call so that you can call measure killer bay, uh, during your deployment process as part of your deployment process that it's somehow you can call it from Azure DevOps when you deploy your um, data set from dev to test it, measure killer will give you all the things that you actually don't need and then you can confirm if you want to keep it or you, you have a way of um, removing the things that are not needed. I think that would be amazing. Um, but we're just exploring this option at the, at this point. So, OK, so if there's anyone on the um, call that wants to come off mute and even provide some feedback um, or, or ask a question, now's your opportunity.
just letting you know that I've managed to successfully run it on one of my models. Oh, and, well done. Yeah, that's where the blockage was earlier. And how many uh, how many measures has it killed? Oh, I can tell you how much it wants to get rid of by the screaming amounts of red it's got on the screen, and that's just columns. Um, oh dear. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, some of that was conscious, um, but uh, it's a significant effort um, to sit down and do it. But it's a worthwhile exercise to go through. Um, what's the when you say reading artifacts? Uh, what are the what's the number um, that it's counting up to? What do you call that? Sorry, uh, reading reading what? So, so, so when it's initially loading the model um, for mm -hmm. or analyzing it after clicking run, so you've got reading artifacts, you know, eighty-seven percent, yeah. thirteen hundred and sixty of fifteen hundred and fifty-six. What do you refer to that number as? Is the, are those the so there's fifteen hundred artifacts that you're looking at? Yes, I mean, like if it's I don't know ten divided by a hundred, it means currently it read ten artifacts out of a total of a hundred artifacts in in your model or to be analyzed. Right, so the artifacts, yeah. yeah. So right. I haven't loaded all the thin reports, um, but I I will do it again with the thin reports. Um, but uh, this first run, it's loaded fifteen hundred and fifty six artifacts that it's gone through. So nice. I don't know in in your world if that is um, large or how you might therefore think of think of it <laughs> um but yeah it's got a fair bit of output to go through which is uh, very exciting right yeah thank you so much i mean you know it's called measure killer but <laughs> yeah now uh, maybe i would say maybe it would be cool to um have it called something else because it's not really about measures anymore right I mean, measures yeah. is more like an organizational thing but removing unused columns wow that actually gives you a big plus it gives you better performance uh, lower yeah, size yeah that's right yeah i know that's some of nice. my um measures um during some of the development cycles i'd renamed deliberately to put delete me in front of it with the future intention of doing that but it's like well i know i called it delete me i should be able to but do i really want to do that so right. yeah <laughs> um and and this can then provide the confirmation it is safe to do so right. i mean it's always good before you do this um yeah do a backup um also look oh, through the limitations right there are some limitations some very very specific use cases where um you might get wrong wrong results um so it's it's good to check on the website what it cannot do um but um if you keep a backup i think it's it's just easier to go for it and, and see because it, it's pretty good at this point i would say mm -hmm, absolutely I, I, yeah and I, I, I would what i would do would be to delete them from my local model you know once i figured out what i'm doing with the backups and all that sort of stuff and then i'd probably push the changes for, to the model with uh using alm toolkit um up to the service now, I have a bit of a curveball question for you, Gregor. Um, you were at BITS last week, and you probably would have um, come across a session on the new TMDL announcement. You know, what, what, what is that? How does that impact your, the, um, your tool? Does it make life easier? Um, I think it will make life a little easier because now we have to really scramble to get the M code. Um, it's quite messy, everything. Um, it will make some things easier, um, but analyzing the model it has been pretty easy already. I would say, I mean, that's that's what most external tools do, right? You get the, mm -hmm. I don't know, the relationships, things like this. Um, where we put in most of our effort was uh, analyzing the layout, the report layout, which is a disaster, <laughs> which is super complex, crazy JSON file, right? Um, and that's where we have built the most logic. So that is not being touched by that, at least for now. Um, I don't know what you guys plan on doing, but um, this is where Measure Killer basically is really contributing a lot, I would say, because there are no really good tools for the report layout because it is so messy. And also there are certain questions about um, reading the PBIX file, of course. Um, 
but it hasn't it doesn't have so much impact on us actually but it will maybe give us um a little less um work in the future okay well hopefully that's a good thing and it just makes your job to um uh add, add new features easier so right all right well we're yeah. nearly at time so thank you very much Gregor, for jumping and listening and klaus on the chat we didn't hear too much from klaus um i think that probably means you did a very good job Gregor. so we'll, we'll wrap up there so thank you very much okay. um thanks for everyone on the call for for jumping in um, I think we're going to probably do a Power BI tip session next month where we might get a couple of experts from different parts of the world, maybe win an MVP from uh, Perth. And I'll hopefully try and get Mike, Mike Carlo um, from Wisconsin, who you talked about, his external tool um, to, to maybe dial in too, depending on the time zone. But otherwise, thank you so much for getting up early. I hope you, um, your young one goes well. And um, yeah. Uh, hopefully you'll get a couple of paid subscriptions from this part of the world. If you see any come in from New Zealand, that's probably a direct result of jumping into this call. So um, um, otherwise, everyone else, I'll post the recording on our channel as usual after I've stripped out all the usual PII stuff and um, uh, look forward to seeing everyone next month, if not before. All right. See you all Thank later. you so much. Bye-bye. Brilliant. Thanks, everyone. Bye.